Hello friends, welcome to Block Bytes. If you are even remotely involved in the crypto world, you must have heard of staking or liquid staking. But are there different things? And if yes, then what is the difference? In this video, we will learn what is liquid staking, how to do it as a beginner, and what are the risks associated with it. Before we start, a disclaimer that everything shown here is only for educational purposes and is not financial advice. Let's begin. Staking lies at the heart of every proof of stake blockchain. It refers to depositing a certain amount of native tokens to guarantee security to those who use the chain. Think of it as a security deposit. According to Ethereum, Staking is the act of depositing 32 ETH tokens to activate validator software. But how does this guarantee security? Security in the proof of stake chain means that the validators that make up the network do not mess up intentionally or by mistake. In other words, they work as intended and do not jeopardize the network. If they engage in nefarious activities, their security deposit is slashed or reduced as a punishment and eventually the validator can also be removed permanently from the network. So why would anybody deposit their ETH? This is a crucial point to understand as it is the hallmark of the entire crypto ecosystem. In Ethereum, validators are paid rewards for their work. So, on one hand, I lock up 32 ETH tokens, which is a lot of money these days. And in return, I get paid regularly for the work I do as a validator in the same ETH tokens. Sounds reasonable. But what if I don't have 32 ETH tokens? Can I still get a taste of some of this regular income? Enter liquid staking. Liquid staking enables people to come together and pool their tokens to reach the 32 ETH limit, which gets staked on the blockchain and the rewards are distributed amongst them. There are several advantages to this approach. First, you do not need 32 ETH yourself. Second, you do not need to run your own validator. And third, it also provides liquidity. The first two points are self-explanatory but let's look at the third in detail. When you stake your ETH tokens, you are essentially depositing them from your wallet into a staking pool, which means that ETH that you could have used to buy an NFT or lend to someone will now be logged away just like a fixed deposit. In other words, your liquid asset has now become illiquid. Liquid staking solves this problem by minting and providing you with a staked version of the ETH token to replace your original ETH tokens in your wallet. This is a powerful concept. Not only will you receive the regular rewards for your staked ETH, but you now also possess the same amount of liquid ETH. It is as if you never parted with your ETH tokens. You can now buy that NFT using the staked version of the ETH or better, lend it and get lending rewards over and above everything else. No wonder liquid staking has overtaken DeFi giants like Uniswap and Aave in TVL and is now the dominant category. Now let that you know the power of liquid staking, let's look at some commonly used liquid staking protocols or projects where you can go and stake your tokens. Please note, I have deliberately kept centralized exchanges out from this list, although staking through them is the easiest. Because of the market cash crash of 2022, I have learned to stay away from centralized exchanges as much as possible. That is what I also recommend. Lido is the most popular liquid staking project and the first to create a liquid staking mechanism for ETH holders. Lido can also be used to stake other tokens like Sol and Matic. 
the picture provides the annual percentage return you will get for staking your tokens. The stake tokens received in exchange are denoted with an ST prefix. For example, staked ETH will be ST ETH and staked SOL will be ST SOL. ST ETH is a rebasing token, which means once acquired, the number of tokens you hold increases without requiring any action. You can track the staking rewards by visiting this website and supplying your public address, which contains the stake ETH tokens. Currently, Lido enjoys its position as the market leader in liquid staking, and that this is what I would also recommend for beginners. The next decentralized liquid staking project is Rocket Pool. At the time of writing, our ETH has an annualized yield of 5.09%. Our ETH is a value accrual token, which means the value of each token keeps growing in ETH denomination over time. And you will see this value change in your wallet. The yield is different for Rocket Pool. However, if we look at a historical comparison of the annual yields of ST ETH and R ETH, we see some instances in the past where R ETH had better APY. And so it would be prudent, I feel, to diversify into R or Rocket Pool as well. Like Lido, once you stake, you receive an equivalent amount of R ETH in your wallet. There are many other liquid staking projects but I would not recommend these to the beginner as they are riskier. In the next section, we'll look at what these risks are. Every investment comes with risks, as we all know. Let's look at the risk associated with liquid staking that you must know as an investor. First, technology-related risks. Several risks emanate from the technology and its implementation. For example, liquid staking essentially is nothing but a bunch of computer programs or smart contracts that run on the blockchain. If there is a bug or in the code itself, it could lead to an exploit resulting in the loss or devaluation of the asset. Second, de-pegging risk. Stake tokens are not pegged to their underlying assets value. It is essential to understand that these stake tokens have their market dynamics. So their value depends on it. For example, in the aftermath of the Terra Luna meltdown, selling pressure was seen on ST ETH as companies scrambled to generate liquidity to pay off their debts and liabilities, which caused a dip in its value vis-a-vis -vis ETH itself. Third, liquidity risk. In a bearish market where there is selling pressure on a staked ETH, on a staked token, it is possible that you might not be able to exchange your staked ETH for ETH because of the liquidity crunch as everybody else is also doing it. Fourth, the risk from over leverage. The crypto ecosystem is known for over leverage trades. Everyday people invest their staked assets into various leverage trading opportunities to add as much additional APY on top of what you would get from staking. The more APY you run after, the riskier your trade becomes. Every liquid staking project, ha project has this risk, but it is more significant for projects not at the top. So I do not recommend other projects to beginners. I will end this video with a summary of what we have learned so far. Staking and liquid staking are different. Staking requires 32 ETH, whereas liquid staking can be done with as low as 0.01 ETH tokens. Liquid staking pools are all the little contributions together to make 32 ETH before staking them on the blockchain. Several risks exist with liquid staking, which if materialized could result in loss of funds. Lido and Rocket Pool dominate the market 
and are the least risky liquid staking providers. And finally, centralized exchanges providing staking rewards are the easiest to use, but are also the riskiest among all the liquid staking providers. I hope you like this video. Please make sure you understand the risks before investing your assets in liquid staking. I recommend reading more about this topic before taking that decision. Do like and share, and I will see you next time with another fresh bite. Bye-bye.